I gotta buy some of my own coffee cups. I just heard a tremendous amount of coyotes really close. Luckily, I just finished, but uh, I don't like that, so... Ah! <laughs> this is oh, absolutely glorious. So long story short, my U-joints failed because I never replaced them, which is something you should do, I think every 50,000 miles, look it up, Google it, because I don't actually know that. But mine were far past due. For all I know, my truck, uh, my U-joints were original and the truck has 180,000 miles on it. So I screwed up a couple times. The first time I broke a U-joint and I was just driving and it was a disaster, it was very violent when this happened. So you want to avoid this. Um, so I replaced that one U-joint instead of replacing both both of them. Well, fast forward about a month, I hit a puddle of water, tire spun a little bit, and then my tires grabbed, and uh, the other U-joint said bye-bye. So, and then that that time, it ruined my drive shaft. Uh, it just, all my chains flew up to the ceiling. It was a very violent, scary, loud occurrence that I don't want to experience again. So, uh, it took me a minute to source one out at the junkyard because apparently for a Chevy Colorado, there are 17 different types of drive shafts. Not really, there's three. But uh, to find, apparently the base model that I have does not go to the junkyard very much because people use them until they are shot and the people who can afford a four wheel drive Colorado send them to the junkyard. So I finally got me myself one of these from the junkyard and it does have U-joints, but I don't know how old they are. And though they look like they are in good shape, they spray painted the whole drive shaft. Why, I don't know, make it look nice. So I actually can't tell if these U-joints are good or not. So I went to AutoZone and got two new U-joints and they're actually surprisingly cheap. I think the last time I paid $45 for one, this time their heavy duty ones were uh, 20, 20 bucks each. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. I don't know if this is the right method, but this is what I've done in the past. So here we go. Fairly simple. You leave that side the way it is, you slide that into the transmission and then there are two little seat clamps that bolt right around those. Mine just shattered completely and I don't know where they are, they're somewhere in the streets. Of Arvada and so I went to the junkyard and I pulled let's see I don't even know where they are they're somewhere in here though there's one there's two and then four bolts boom 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 I swear if I lost one bolt that was lucky okay so four bolts these go on the back cool now I'm gonna knock those out you can buy a special tool. Um, so you take these C-clamp or these uh, retaining clips off and then you can buy a tool that's basically a glorified C-clamp and then you can press these out. I don't have that tool, but I have a hammer. Okay, so these are the two different U-joints that I was told will fit my truck. But this one, if you'll notice right here has a groove, whereas this one has none. So I got to figure out what end this belongs to. And we are going to begin by taking these clips out. Oh, son of a gun. I've had this drive shaft in my shop for months now, and if I had planned this out properly, I would have soaked this in WD-40 to make this part a little easier. I do one. Maybe. <coughs> okay, one out. I'm covering this so if it pops out, it does not hit me in the face on how snug those were. I'm assuming these are needed to be changed so now normally there's a seat clamp and so you got the threaded part that goes in and presses and then on the other side instead of just being a clamp it actually has a hole so this bearing can press out i don't have that so i'm going to get a hammer you want to do this lightly because you don't want to damage the drive shaft in any way shape or form otherwise all this is pointless Unless I'm out of WD-40. There, yeah, you like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got that pounded down a little bit and basically what we're trying to do is get this side to come out completely and then we'll just grab it with a pair of pliers, pull it off and then hit it the opposite way, pull that off and then it'll slide out.
Well, the rear is all done. My phone died, so I can show you uh, the last bit of it, and I'm trying to get this done tonight. So I set those aside just for now because they kept slipping off, so I don't want the little needle bearings to fall apart. So I just set them there for now. Um, got all the clips off of this side, started pounding this out. So I'm going to go ahead and knock all those out, and then I'll show you uh, me putting them in. By the way, I think you really should, if you have access to that clamp, use that, because if you hit this the wrong way, uh, you probably could cause some damage. So I'm tapping it pretty light and trying to be careful, but uh, that tool is made for a reason. But like I said, I've done this in the past and it worked. So just as long as you're not hammering like a madman, you should be all right. break those out so you miss that part and then uh, I actually kind of kind of screwed up and I popped one of the new sides out and all the little needle bearings fell so I had to get this little little tiny guy here and kind of fish them all back into place to make sure everything's good but it's uh it's got all range of motion that it should now the ling part is the truck is in the back of the shop battery's dead not that it would move rather than pushing it all the way around the building by myself I'm going to endure the odd amount of wind that we have right now. And then I'll pull the other truck I'm driving right now around, jump start it, drive it around, boom, we're done. Good news is that's all put together. I didn't break anything. Bad news is I gotta go outside and my truck's lowered, so I might have to jack it up. I don't know what's going on, but it's cold and I don't wanna do that, but I'm excited to drive the truck and we have what we need, so I'm going to do this. So, that's what we're working with there. So I'm gonna pop them off real quick. Oh, this is gonna be fun. That's gonna, yep, sweet, sick. Can't put it in park either. That's awesome. Okay guys, this is as advanced as I got. This is using a pry bar. <clears throat> It's really hard to film under here because I can't see what you're seeing. So I got those off and then I need to slide the drive shaft into that hole right there. And then bolt that side of the drive shaft back onto that. And then I need to jump start it and then we should be good. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to just say bye now and I'll talk to you in a minute. I just heard a tremendous amount of coyotes really close luckily i just finished but uh, i don't like that so i'm gonna bring the other truck around jump this thing and not lay under a car next to a field ow oh that's a swamp cooler to my dome piece gosh dang it i don't say dome piece that's how much that hurt oh. ow this is why we were called garage idiots oh yeah so the reason why i'm doing all this is because the master cylinder on that is just it's getting really, really difficult to drive. This is starting to become a serious issue. Watch this. Do you know how hard it is to drive <laughs> a clutch when it acts like that? Showed you the clutch pedal sticking. So uh, that's gonna be like, uh, probably like a four to five hour job. It sounds simple, but it's way behind the shock tower. You can't see it. It's just gonna be a huge pain in the butt. I knew this was a straightforward shot, so, and I like my truck more. I hate that Civic a lot. I haven't driven it in five or six months, so I'm, man, I'm so excited. It sounds good, too. I haven't really showed any of you guys the truck because it really hasn't been anything special. Um, I do have some plans I want to do with it, and I'll go over that at the end of the video, assuming it still starts. I hate this jack. I have jumper cables, keys to the, oh, you can't see the bug yet. Maybe you can, I don't know if you can. Bug's back, I don't know if I've shown it to you yet because all these videos are way out of whack. Check it out, you can't see it. Jumper cables daylight jumping. Come on now, Betsy. We're starting, but it is started. Doesn't that sound decent? Or a little turd bucket? Let's see, so I told you the uh, these things kind of freak out. So now we got ABS light on. 
uh, my doors open, uh, brake light and airbag. And all of that is completely wrong and irrelevant because none of that was there before. 185,000 miles and I love it. It literally has been sitting for about six months so I'm just gonna let it warm up for a minute. Alternator clearly works really well still. It has been far too long. It's not a nice truck, but I love it so much. That went uh, as planned, no surprises. Um, everything seems to be working properly. I put it in gear just to make sure everything engaged is good. Gosh, I just missed seeing it with the taillights on and hearing it run. This is a good day. Very excited. Still can't see the bug. I'm gonna push it outside. I don't know if I'm doing this in order or not, but just in case, you can't see the bug. So I'm gonna push it outside, pull the truck around, and we're gonna dig into it a little bit. I'm no Cletus McFarlane, but this deserves a celebratory Mountain Dew, and I'm ready to go drive it. Okay, so power steering still feels a little, uh, look at that, all the lights went away. The airbag has been there, it's something with the sensor, don't care. Um, so power steering still feels a little light. The tires seem to be full of air. I just replaced the pump before this thing died. I also just filled it up with gas before it it exploded the drive shafts. Just a little cruise around the block. Oh yeah, my windshield is absolutely shot. Ah! <laughs> this is oh, absolutely glorious. I can't even, I can't even describe how happy I am. Let's flip a Louie, and we'll go in there. Oh, one-handed, limited-powered steering U-turn. <laughs> Everything feels good. No, no weird noises from the drive shaft, no vibration. Obviously, we'll probably have to go a little quicker to see if there is any vibration, but... Uh, so far, guys, this is wonderful. So my shop is actually right there. Sorry, windshield's filthy. There's a dude in that Jeep, and that was kind of creepy, so we're not gonna do this right there. Revved out decently. Definitely slower than the Civic, like 1,000% slower than the Civic. I actually raced one of my SIs, uh, my friend Ethan had one and I was in the truck and he, I kid you not, he put like five or six cars on me, like no problem. So it's definitely a slow turd, but it sounds nice and it is extremely functional. I miss going to the junkyard in this thing. I did just hear a strange noise. I don't like that. I'm wondering if it'll start by itself with the battery charged. Shut your mouth. We're golden. Okay, so things the truck needs to look a little nicer. <clears throat> that bumper. Uh, my friend was pulling me. I didn't know he hooked it right there. And he hooked it right there. So bend the bumper. Um, that bottom part obviously looks terrible. Um, these have a little bit of hail damage, but they're actually uh, new from the junkyard because my old ones had a lot of hail damage. Uh, up here, the hail damage was super bad. And I tried to bondo it and then vinyl wrapped it and I did a really bad job. Um, so that could be redone. I feel like I've honed my skills a little bit. I did this, gosh, like two years ago. Um, so we could definitely either re-vinyl wrap that or paint it. Um, also there are holes in my roof. This was a service truck. So the hail hit whatever patch they had there. And uh, we put like three pieces of vinyl over that before we put the black on, but apparently it didn't work. Um, the sides are relatively straight, um, back here, not a whole lot going on. These, uh, tailgate handles are terribly cheap. And so after my third one that I broke, 
I've just left it off, but we'll probably get a new one on there if we're wanting to make it look nice. Uh, this side has a good amount of little tiny hail dents all the way down it, but nothing major. I mean, it's a work truck. Here is still a complete mess. Um, these are Hyundai Veloster bucket seats that uh, me and Dennis fabbed up to fit in here. Oh, chapstick. Gross. That's probably like a year old. Um, so I have all uh, stock vents and stuff. This was the first thing I ever hydro dipped and uh, I hate it, but I'm too lazy to redo it because it's just, I can ignore it. So um, I have all new, like this was dipped and I replaced it with just the factory one. When I sell the Civic and get a Caprice, we'll probably do what we're about to do or what I'm about to tell you. Um, so the, this thing sounds really good. Um, a handful of guys have messed with them and made between three and 450 horsepower. Do, since we're not doing the rear mount turbo on the Jeep anymore, I think it'd be really cool because we have a lot more room under the car. I think it'd be really cool to do a rear mount turbo right there and then just um, kind of build a little little box around it so it's still functional as a truck bed uh, and kind of hide it. And then for probably for until I'm ready to blow this motor and LS swap it, um, run it on like three or four pounds, just a real light, I mean, like literally like three, maybe four pounds, just enough to tickle it, get a little bit of the noises, just a little tiny bit more power. Um, my theory, with the three to four pound thing, and you have to Google this and double check, but I think atmospheric pressure at sea level is 14.7 PSI or something like that. And up here at altitude, because we're in Denver, we're at about five, like 5,500 feet. Um, the atmospheric pressure is closer to like 11, I think. So in theory, this thing would be making about three PSI more power at sea level if that makes sense. We're still pressurizing the air, so we're still causing a little bit more stress on the motor, but power-wise, um, basically, if I can put a turbo on it, run it super low boost, um, get a wide band, make sure air fuels are all good, we should be able to run it without a tune if the boost is low enough. That's my theory. I'm not going to get into that yet. I'm going to appreciate having a running truck again um but probably when i when i fix the civic and sell it and then get a caprice and i have another car that's automatic super reliable fun to drive it'd be really cool to dig into this so the plan is to buy everything i need for an ls swap and then we can really push that motor and see if it's worth anything like i said i know some guys have made like 350 400 um i don't know how reliable that is it is not a popular motor to do anything to decent i want to buy a new bed cover this actually was really nice but just wear and tear and weather and uh it's pretty useless now um but this was like 200 bucks i think so i probably buy another one of those um i think these turn signals and headlights are new i'm not sure why i do have other wheels for it that let it uh, it actually sits up a little higher which i like because it's it's actually uh pretty stinking low to the ground it's hard to get a jack under it in some places so Okay, that's enough of me talking. Truck's running, guys. Tell you guys, um, so the exhaust is a stock exhaust. We just cut the muffler off. This was five years ago. And then we welded in a resignator. So it's not stupid loud, but the five cylinder actually does have a good little rumble to it. Apparently I need a new battery. Forget what I just said. I'm gonna push it outside, jump start it, bring it back in here and show you guys a couple revs because I love you. And I know you want to hear this 225 horsepower roaring in the night in my shower. Oh, maybe it is heavy. I'm gonna fix the bumper and the roof period and i'm gonna buy a bed cover if you guys think i should just do that and stop there and just keep it simple and clean cool if you guys have weird ideas cool let me know um i have no idea my video schedule right now because i'm doing all 
doing all sorts of stuff all at once. We lowered my cousin's truck today. Uh, I did that. I got wheels for the Civic. Like just all kinds of random stuff is happening. So I don't know what order these videos are going to be in. But in any case, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for bearing with me. Um, I'm I'm thrilled. You guys you guys have no idea, and it sounds so weird to be so excited over such a crummy little truck to most people. But I I hate I hate driving the Civic, and it it really is a decent car. I just, I don't like how it looks. Um, I don't like dailing a manual. Traffic here in Denver is so stupid now. It's just, it's a pain in the butt in this. And then like going, putting anything in the Civic is a nightmare. Like the the exhausts and wheels and tires, like it's just been a pain in the butt. This, so let me know what you guys think. Sorry, that was a, that was a probably a good 10 minutes of me talking. So, uh, <laughs> all right, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.